Welcome to all participants of today's webinar in Eden. Uh, it's nice to see you are joining in. Please don't hesitate to introduce yourself, your institution. Hello, Christina from Timisoara, Arad from Romania, Gori, uh, Orna from Dublin, and uh, everyone else. My name is Irina and I uh, come from uh, Vitalas Magnus University in Eden, uh, Eden Digital Learning uh, Europe. And uh, today we have uh, another interesting uh, webinar for uh, European Open and Distance Learning Week 2021. So allow me first of all to introduce uh, the event. And uh, I'm very happy and proud uh, to mention that uh, European Open and Distance Learning Week is organized uh, since 2016 as a very successful series of autumn events in Eden. Uh, and uh, since the beginning, uh, this week is co-organized with the National Distance Learning Week in the United States, United States Distance Learning Association. And uh, uh, year by year, it gained more and more interest and um, contributions from over uh, the globe and Europe. And uh, this year, uh, European Open and Distance Learning Week is co-organized co together um, with the partners uh, Open Distance Learning Association in, in Australia, uh, jointly with Flexible Learning Association of New Zealand, who are launching Asia-Pacific Online Distance Education Week. And uh, we also have a very special webinar as a contribution uh, by uh, International Council for Distance Education. So just uh, or to mention that all events are taking place uh, with synchronous participation, but also with a synchronous access and review of the records available after each webinar. And uh, I'm also very happy today uh, to have a very special session uh, that actually addresses student voices. It's um, a very important event um, uh, because we must admit we sometimes quite seldom invite the students to share with us their feedback, their opinion, their uh, point of view. And today we uh, called for the student voice on the opportunities and benefits of online and distance education during the pandemic. I'm sure we're all very tired and uh, want to avoid as much as possible the last um, keyword in our daily life. But uh, without uh, the lessons learned uh, during this uh, period that, that we had uh, as a mainstream of open and uh, distance uh, uh, education uh, worldwide, we would not be able today to talk about the not only challenges, but also the good practices and lessons learned that we would like to take with us to the future. So the agenda for today's webinar is as follows. We will have student satisfaction survey from University of Zagreb uh, from Croatia. We will have students' voices from Vitotas Magnus University UNESCO IBE Master Program Management of Education from Lithuania, the students from Georgia and Azerbaijan. We will have uh, student um, satisfaction surveys uh, from Vitotas Magnus University program level and uh, Academy of Education. We will have students' voices from Dublin City University Connected Humanities program, uh, student and uh, program level as well. And then we will have questions and answers with the participants of the session. It's my honor to introduce to you uh, the speakers of today's webinar and today's panel. So Orna Farrell from Dublin uh, City University in Ireland, uh, together with a student, uh, Sinead Lynch from Dublin City University. Uh, Ausra Rutkiene and Lena Kaminskene from Vitotas Magnus University. Ausra is the program director and Lena is the chancellor of Academy of Education at Vitotas Magnus University. Together with 
two students uh, from master program, Tamari Ivanidze, a student at Little Das Magnus University who comes from Georgia, and Vusala Idrisli from Azerbaijan. And uh, we have uh, uh, Vice Dean for Education from the Faculty of Organization of Informatics at University of Zagreb, Croatia, Professor Sandra Lovrencic. Uh, so these are our speakers for today's session. And I won't take uh, more of your time, but uh, as our session will be combined with short presentations, reflections in an oral and open reflective way from the panel. Uh, we will combine both formats in the session. And I will, of course, encourage all uh, participants in the session to post your questions and comments to the speakers in the chat so that we can address them either in the um, uh, our interchangeable format uh, of the session or at the very end uh, during the questions and answers. Uh, with the panel and participants. So let's uh, start now and I invite uh, uh, Sandra, uh, our first uh, speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Sandra Lovrencic, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Organization and Info Informatics at the University of Zagreb in Croatia to introduce to us student satisfaction survey that you implemented in your university. Please, Sandra, the floor is yours. Uh, can you see the presentation? Just tell me if it's uploaded. Yes? Yes, now I can see it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just to let me... Okay, yes. Okay, so I will present um, a survey of uh, student satisfaction with education process during the pandemic. Uh, that we conducted uh, at the Faculty of Organization and Informatics uh, in Croatia. I would like just to say a couple of words about our uh, e-learning process before the pandemic, uh, because we are the Faculty of Informatics, so we actually were engaged in e-learning a long time <laughs> ago. Um, immediately after the University of Zagreb uh, adopted e-learning strategy in 2007, Faculty of Organization and Informatics also adopted it. Actually, our teachers, uh, teachers were actively involved in developing uh, e-learning strategy. And uh, since then, we are continuously using LMS Moodle for um, uh, all courses and all study programs. Uh, so it's obligatory for all, but not, uh, of course, not uh, all teachers use it at uh, the equal level. And teachers continuously improve their skills, of course, because they use uh, Moodle and they also uh, continuously participate in projects about e-learning. So we actually had um, a lot of experience in e-learning, but of course, uh, uh, all of us could be prepared for such a sudden change that happened um, after the pandemic. Um, actually, when everything started, um, uh, our dean, actually, uh, Professor Bidija Trejev, actually said, okay, something will, will, will go wrong. And we actually had first workshop about online teaching several days before government decision to stop the teaching process in classrooms in March last year for all of our teachers just to prepare them uh, what will happen. And uh, since then, we continuously have workshops about uh, uh, online teaching. Uh, we are all, uh, continuously adopting new technologies in our classrooms. We have a lot of equipment so that we can uh, uh, be uh, so that we can do this process as uh, as bet as much as we can for our students to be better. Um, in last academic year, our teaching process was conducted almost completely online, as well as exams. I think that we were uh, one of the rare faculties that, that had that in Croatia. It started immediately, uh, immediately after the 1st of November, first two weeks, next two weeks, next two weeks, and then we had to make a decision for the whole summer semester because of our students that are traveling. Uh, so uh, we have a year and a half experience and uh, last year was almost completely uh, full online. And this year teaching process is conducted hybridly, hybridly because of the lack of space and we have um, uh, um, uh, lectures are held uh, for, cup, for half of students online, half of students uh, uh, in the classrooms, and seminars and the laboratory exercises are in classrooms. Uh, but of, of course, during the larger numbers, we have to start uh, having uh, seminars and um, um, lectures online in the uh, next two weeks. 
Uh, and the student satisfaction surveys are held during each semester. So I would like to just to present what our students told us about our, um, our teaching process in this last year and a half. We actually um, created a first survey, online survey for our students at the end of the April of uh, the last year, uh, only after a month and a half of uh, online teaching. And it was a survey for individual courses, and we had 2,200 uh, 2, surveys filled. That doesn't mean that uh, all, uh, a lot of students filled it. We have uh, approximately um, 2,600 uh, 2, students because um, a lot of students filled the survey for a couple of courses that they attended. Uh, but we, we, we really wanted to have this feedback about our online teaching as soon as possible to see uh, if we adapt it um, appropriately and if the students can uh, uh, learn um, uh, and, and, and use this sudden change. Um, uh, we had uh, this survey uh, consisted of four parts uh, about course organization, about teaching materials, knowledge assessments, uh, and the general information about study. And students also could uh, enter their textual suggestions uh, about course organization materials and assessments, what they think uh, was not uh, good for them and what they think could be done better, uh, etc. So we, we had a lot of, a lot of uh, feedback. And uh, we wanted our teachers to uh, to see this feedback and so that they can adjust to it uh, before the end of semester, before exams, etc. So that uh, and teachers and students can um, have better 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 results. And actually, we were surprised. Uh, we actually got very good grades. Uh, we used Likert scale for uh, scale from one to five, and uh, all elements uh, actually get uh, uh, grade four approximately. Uh, the only the only uh, problem that, that was was with frequency of knowledge uh, self assessments or assessment. That was grade three, and that was actually expected. We actually we had a lot of experience with e learning, and we had a lot of materials online. But uh, all our exams earlier were held in class. So we actually had to uh, very quickly make some online assessments. Um, some teachers use them, of course, but not all, and, and exams and uh, midterm exams, etc. And uh, students, of course, noted that we couldn't prepare a lot of those um, uh, exams and assessments uh, in, in that quick time. Uh, after that, we um, last year we, we decided to have serv service in each semester. Uh, approximately after thirds of each semester is uh, finished and we revised a little bit questions and we had separate service for teaching process in general and for uh, each course, not teachers, but the course in general. Um, students still can uh, uh, give their input about suggestions for course organization materials and assessment and they, they, they do this, of course, because everything is anonymous so uh, they can really write what they feel about our teaching process. Uh, um, we, we, we didn't have uh, hmm, uh, very much respondents, and, and you can see that uh, in winter semester, 35% of our students uh, filled in the survey, and in summer semester, only 20% of students filled uh, in the, um, the survey. Um, so uh, we try to, we, we of course try to motivate them to fill, uh, and we will try uh, this year also to motivate them to fill uh, the survey. A better. Uh, this is for teaching process in general, and I will just say what were the results for teaching process in general, not for uh, for courses individually. Uh, students were mostly satisfied with hybrid and online classes, and they were also satisfied with teachers' proficiency with IT tool. Uh, so this was still going well, and online classes were interesting to them, but uh, 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 a lot uh, of them said that contact classes were easier to follow. Uh, their biggest advantage was that they could stay at home and, uh, of course, uh, especially at informatics study because we have economics and information, informatics studies because our economic students come um, from near the Varazdin and uh, informatics students come from all over Croatia and abroad. And the biggest advantage was difficult communication with teachers followed by need for equipment, of course, and we were surprised by this difficult communication. And of course, difference were according, differences were according to the level of study. Students that were at uh, uh, first level of study in lower grades wanted more, uh, more uh, contact classes and the students at uh, graduate study wanted more online classes especially at our information system study because they all work uh, over student contracts and they, when they are at graduate study. 
You can see, I just put several graphs here. Uh, you can see those graphs for uh, results for online uh, classes and for contact classes. This is the first one is for winter semester. Um, uh, the problem is that the distribution is really dissimilar. So yes, we have a some average grade, but uh, the answers were really uh, almost equal. And of course, online classes were interesting. Um, and the contact classes were easier to follow than online classes. Uh, this uh, this was in the winter semester. So students thought that uh, uh, contact classes were easier, but in summer semester, um, uh, Online classes became a little more interesting, and the contact classes became more anonymous because uh, this was already the second time that we had uh, summer semester online. And of course, uh, teachers uh, improved their material, students adjusted to online teaching. So uh, we can see this change from, uh, from winter to summer semester. Uh, in uh, the after our service and, of course, uh, with, with uh, discussions with teachers, etc., we could uh, say that online teaching and learning is well accepted, although, although our teachers think that nothing can substitute some parts of uh, contact classes. Undergraduate students, of course, gave advantage to contact classes um, because have, they have to adapt to study, and graduate students want more online classes. Actually, actually they want all online classes because they work. The, we were surprised that students have difficulty communicating with teachers because, because, because we use a lot of technologies. We have, uh, of course, email, we have uh, consultations over Zoom, over Google button, uh, in forums, uh, Moodle, telephone, etc. But students do, still continuously think that they have difficulty communicating with teachers. Uh, teachers, of course, have, have problems because of cheating, and they they think that students will cheat more uh, on online assessments, although we, of course, use uh, various technologies to prevent them. And uh, since we started this fall with hybrid teaching, uh, our, a lot of our teachers said that hybrid teachers is uh, very demanding for them, and uh, because they have to uh, give attention both to students in class and both to online, uh, we will we will see in our next survey if students noticed that and uh, whether online teaching was for them better than hybrid teaching. So uh, I think that I'm about ten or eleven minutes, and I think that. Um, I'm in my time frame. Yes. Thank so. you very much. Um, that was Professor Sandra Lovrencic from University of Zagreb, uh, from Croatia. Thank you very much, Sandra, for introduction of uh, the student satisfaction survey from Croatia. Now we will move, move on to other countries and other universities, and then we'll come back for, for the discussion. Uh, please, uh, all session attendants, if you have questions, post them uh, currently in the chat. So now I move to Lithuania, Vitotas Magnus University. And first, I invite uh, students, Tamari and Busala, uh, from uh, UNESCO IB Master Program Management of Education. So Tamari, Busala, we would like to hear what were your experiences, lessons learned from the pandemic. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to be here. So as another representative of Student Voice, so I really feel that uh, my university uh, considers its students' uh, point of view about different issues. Uh, and uh, I consider it my duty to appreciate it. So uh, I will just uh, briefly uh, present so we have limited time. Uh, the biggest challenges, so that we are the biggest challenges, challenges during the pandemic situation, uh, lack of sociality, increased anxiety, uh, loneliness and stress, having different online platforms and less international mobility. Uh, so, uh, and what was the role of faculty? So how have faculty helped us to solve the problem? So we had online group work. So teachers, we are always trying to, uh, even during the seminar or lecture uh, uh, process, so they were trying to give us some um, online group work. So uh, for the, I mean, the stress, so we were, I mean, the, we were receiving emails from the university, uh, 
so that we uh, had the a psychological aid. So psychological clinic was, I mean, the uh, sending us emails. So we had different online platforms um, and we were graded sometimes in Studentus Portal and sometimes in Moodle. So uh, from the beginning, we were really uh, confused. So we had to see our grades, but uh, the collaboration with teachers and the course mates was really, really helpful for, for, helpful for us and less international mobility. So as I know, uh, so... Uh, there are maybe two projects were implemented by the Pitautas Magnus University. Professor Irina presented once about the, those projects so that uh, it was like a virtual mobility so that and students, uh, uh, they were, I mean, they had the possibility to participate in virtual mobility. So um, um, the factors define the, uh, defining the effective online education during the pandemic. So I think those factors are really, really important. So in order to have, I mean, the successful online learning and teaching. So these factors are like a student-faculty partnership, digitally competent teachers, uh, online platforms, online tools, and online teaching experience. So I know that So we had really good uh, student-faculty partnership, and we had all the, I mean, the teachers, most of our teachers, we are digitally competent teachers, and uh, we we have we still have like a three uh, online platforms. So uh, if something is wrong, we can change our platforms, online tools. Like uh, teachers are uh, using a lot of range of online tools uh, successfully. And uh, without this, Magnus University uh, uh, before pandemic uh, ha ha had like a, let's say a really good uh, great online teaching experience. So which really is important. So. Um, um, uh, Vitautas Magnus University and versus online learning. Uh, so um, on this slide, I try to um, um, speak how the university maintained the quality uh, of uh, teaching and learning process. So students were asked to address the problems that they were facing. Uh, students were provided with, with various kind of aid, including spiritual and psychological. Uh, from time to time, professors were asking students to express their ideas uh, about study process. Uh, and um, um, so uh, university conducted uh, the student psychological well-being survey, also um, the survey on teaching and learning, uh, student survey on teaching and learning, so which, which is really, really important. And the result of students' uh, survey on teaching and learning. So we were receiving uh, all the time emails, so, uh, and we were just informed, so what's going on, so, and it was really important, so... Um, I will just, Vusala uh, will continue, so my course mate. Yeah, thank you, Tamara. Tamara, could you make it full screen, please? Oh, okay. I just yeah. forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. And could you move to the fifth slide? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So besides uh, challenges, I would like to talk about positive changes that also were inspired by pandemic situation. So it is about, uh, about our experience, so what positive changes we noticed here. First of all, location flexibility. I mean, we can we could access from anywhere. Um, Tamari, yeah, we could access from anywhere, like even from work uh, e e easily to the online lectures. And secondly, we gain it time management skills. So especially we could now improve our management, how to manage our time effectively. And also we noted we gained uh, ICT skills and problem solving significantly. Uh, we learned a lot of new things about ICT and also possibility to rewatch the lectures. It was one of the best things I think for that uh, positive changes uh, inspired by uh, pandemic. So because uh, during live lectures, we couldn't like uh, remember everything, but in online lecture, we can now again watch the lecture. And also, as I mean, environmentally, I think it's also good that we use less or no paper. So everything is uh, about like uh, writing online, like uh, electronically, like on tablet and computer, etc. And also, it's a new level of integration of technology into education. I mean, not just in without us, Magnus University, also whole world, like they shifted from, they, they moved to a new level. They use technology into a new level, like a uh, whole world changes the world view. I mean, the, the, about the technology integration in education. So, and also well-prepared teachers. We noticed that during these hard times, but teachers were 
quite uh, ready and uh, they, they were very quick in if there is something like technical issue and or some problems occurred, they were quite uh, like responded in a very fast way and the lectures were really well organized and with full of activities, with full of discussions and uh, was very interesting for us. And uh, the, another thing that we noticed clear course content and expectations at the beginning of each course. So it, 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 uh, teachers uh, used to explain every uh, like whole syllables what we are going to do in every uh, every course in each semester. So uh, it was uh, quite easy and uh, very easy to reach this and flexibility in using learning management systems for online teaching. Like certain teachers, they use let's say uh, Zoom. The others they preferred Adobe Connect, etc. So different. Like it was flexible to use different uh, learning management systems and also improve and self-regulation skills, we really also had more responsibility, took more responsibility during this time uh, to study on our own, to take, to, to improve our self-regulation skills. And lastly, improved virtual collaborations through this discussion forums and pro uh, projects. So we also had a lot of like forums and assignments, projects together. So this also helped us improve virtual collaboration. And our recommendations for effective online teaching and learning from our side it would be like online lectures should be well structured and teachers should be well prepared to keep students engaged as engagement is very important in, in online learning and education uh, institutions should be better prepared to seamlessly transition between face-to-face -face and remote learning as needed. For example, if uh, this is similar situation occurs again, so uh, the institutions can uh, easily shift from, let's say, face-to-face -to, -face to online. And uh, then the most convenient learning environment for everyone should be determined. For example, for us, like hybrid and blended learning was a bit difficult for us to uh, to follow and rather than online learning, just full, full online was the, con the most convenient one for us. Uh, could you move please the next slide? Okay, thank you. And for the teachers, we think uh, teachers should determine whether students are struggling or disengaged then intervene if needed, in, especially in online learning. And teachers should identify which online learning tool is the best suited for, let's say, if the Zoom, if, if which one is the least uh, problems, technical issues or cure, they should uh, choose, I think, this one. For example, we had uh, lots of problems with Adobe Connect, but later uh, the university, the teachers, they moved to Teams. So Teams was better than that. And teachers should encourage teacher-student, I mean, interaction between student, uh, student, teacher-student, and form a uh, learning community, which is also important for online uh, learning. Could you move? The last one is more, we, uh, we have uh, suggestions for further research. So more research should be conducted on whether or not expected learning outcomes in online learning are met. For example, maybe traditional learning outcomes are uh, higher than online. So, and how to engage students during online learning. So engagement, as I already told, is very important. And also how to build a sense of community in online learning, which is also very important. So thank you very much. And thank you very much, Busala Tamari. Uh, that was a voice uh, from students uh, from Azerbaijan and Georgia who study in Lithuania. And uh, now I think this uh, feedback was very positive, but I believe that there were also more challenges uh, and more complaints or uh, hesitations. So we have today with us um, uh, Professor Osha Rutkiene, the program director, and also uh, Professor Lena Kaminskene, the chancellor of the Academy of Education. So I would like to invite uh, both of you to join us and um, maybe you can share with us, uh, any of you, first of all, what complaints, what hesitations, what problems, challenges? Uh, so what were these issues that were firstly addressed uh, by students when pandemic started? Could you please share a little bit uh, of those negative aspects as well with us? Oshra, 
Would you start <laughs> somehow? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. And also, I'm very happy that our students, uh, Vustala and Tamari, also are here. And I'd like to introduce a little bit uh, things, what are standing behind the, the, the situation uh, we had before the pandemic situation. Actually, in 2016, um, Vital Dasmanus University signed uh, the memorandum with uh, UNESCO Bureau of Education. And actually, we implemented uh, the uh, program uh, elements and we are... Our students, uh, all, uh, together with diploma, master diploma, they will get uh, the certificate from UNESCO. So uh, the the first um, students, uh, they have got uh, the certificates in 2018, and it was only one student from uh, abroad. So um, actually now we have uh, about uh, more than 10 students and students are from very different countries. Uh, Japan, uh, China, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Ukraine, Spain, uh, Germany. So actually we can see very broad uh, geography. And uh, of course, uh, to, to start with the, the interna internationalization of the study program, it was a challenge at that time. So uh, what we did, we actually implemented and um, a lot of uh, uh, courses as online courses for regular students. So actually, uh, our uh, staff uh, was prepared uh, for, for this challenge. The, another challenge which comes from student side was uh, possibility uh, to participate uh, for Erasmus exchange. I mean that our students, we are obliged to take uh, UNESCO courses at Vitotas Magnus University. So uh, these courses are uh, they they are taking each semester, and this means that you are have no possibility to uh, go for Erasmus exchange studies, and this was uh, a possibility when our students are abroad. They are uh, doing a lot of Erasmus exchange. They are taking uh, the courses UNESCO courses at Vito Das Magnus University virtually. So actually, it was a possibility and it was a challenge, of course, at, at the beginning. But I should say that it was a good start and we were prepared for a pandemic situation quite well. Also, uh, it was mentioned from the student side, uh, we are talking about virtual mobility. And one more thing from teacher side that... Um, when you are uh, teachers as staff as well uh, going for for exchanges for project meetings and in some cases it's also uh, very comfortable you are feeling very comfortable when you can give a last uh, lecture uh, in time uh, what it was planned but not physically but but virtually yes i agree with students that it was a big challenge to to manage so uh, much <laughs> different tools and different uh, possibilities we have. But I should say that I'm very happy that uh, last semester, uh, the, the big international team of students, they were uh, involved, with, they were engaged in the study process. And I think that, as, as you see, they, they are happy at the moment. Of course, uh, it was a bit problematic for, for some students and for, 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 for the staff to, to uh, organize uh, processes online. But I think uh, we are going forward and, uh, of course, uh, we, we are doing our best. So briefly, that's it, Lena. 
Yes, thank you very much, Osha. And um, maybe I can also ask Lina to mention, besides the challenges, the lessons that, that you already hear and you already have uh, in the department, among teachers, among students, as a chancellor of uh, Academy of Education, which uh, of those lessons uh, you are already taking further and maybe which of them you need to address in more depth and uh, still need maybe to research, to experiment with, what is your uh, experience on, on those? Uh, Lena, I think uh, your video is um, uh, frozen. I, I was talking too long, maybe, to introduce the question. <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, I'm very happy also what you mentioned until uh, Lina releases the video. Uh, I, I think uh, what you mentioned is that during the last uh, semester, uh, engagement uh, indicators were already improved as far as I understand, because it was also Busel who mentioned that uh, uh, engagement issue as well as assessment or learning outcomes issue most probably need to be addressed better uh, by academia so how did you how did you notice that engagement improved uh, uh, of course uh, it, it it came from personal my experience uh, but of course uh, when we are discussing uh, at the faculty level so uh, the we are sharing our experiences between the staff uh, members so and uh, we we are trying to to share our best practices between us. So how organize uh, team work? How organize? How to implement maybe other new uh, methods? Uh, let's say digital storytelling or or some others uh, who also might help. And um, I'm sure that students uh, also are uh, competent in 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 digitally competent to to implement these methods. And in some cases, you um, even don't think about these possibilities, but when you are obliged, so you are trying to implement, you are trying to, to work with the maybe similar method, methods as you're doing in the face-to-face uh, -face meetings, but these implementations of digitalization also helps and gives a, a lot of good experiences. Thank you very much, uh, I see Lena is back. Uh, and uh, please, Lena, could you join us now uh, to give your reflection as the, uh, uh, I see that uh, moving uh, from attendant uh, mode to presenter mode, uh, there, there are maybe, maybe some issues. I see very good questions also in the chat. Uh, uh, it was uh, Fuzia, I think, uh, Aymal, who said that um, some teachers said that they can't teach online and that uh, they, their argument was that we're working in a traditional system. Our field requires traditional mode. And I think these are the arguments that the majority of us also heard maybe not uh, in our departments, but maybe in universities. So, uh, of course, I will also would like to hear what the DCU and, and University of Zagreb think, think about it. But I'll, uh, also just um, uh, we'll try to maybe invite uh, Lina once again uh, to, to reflect uh, shortly. I know, I know that moving from a participant to presenter <laughs> makes uh, technical challenges. Lina, could you try to, to speak up? Uh, I will try very fastly because I'm not in my place. So uh, there is the issue with uh, that the internet is not stable, but uh, I hope that um, I will not repeat Aushra, but maybe I'd like to take only several notes. I think the key words were said by our students and not only by our students. So uh, community uh, is very important and community in the sense that 
co-creation and collaboration appeared very, very critical factors in successful learning during the pandemic period. So the collaboration and co-creation was crucial for teachers because it was even though we were really prepared to go fully online, but we had to share how to work more effectively because you cannot just technically transfer the same teaching and learning modes as you had at the university in a face-to-face -face mode. And also collaboration among students because social interaction is also very important in the learning process. So that's why we had to reconsider many of the activities and tasks, how to engage our learners more, our students to have more complex, more diversified activities, just not to keep them listening to the talking heads all the time. And I think uh, what we also realized that our higher education curriculum should be quite flexible if you want to address very different needs of our students. And the last thing, we were talking about self-regulation learning. So I think the agency of students is also very important as we actually realize that we still lack these skills and we have to invest more in become more autonomous, more self-regulators learning in the process. So probably these were key issues and I really don't want to repeat maybe what Osher already have said. And thank you for the possibility to join you and sorry for these technical issues. Thanks a lot, Lina. Thank you, BMU team. And now I don't waste a minute, but invite um, our uh, third uh, colleague, university, I would call it, uh, and a very strong team uh, represented by Orna and Sinead from DCU, Dublin City University. Uh, please, uh, I know you were leading, uh, leading also the network with consultations, with support, uh, with expertise on how to solve different, different issues uh, when pandemic started. But today we want to hear you again. Uh, what were your challenges? What were the lessons learned and uh, the pickups for the future? Please, uh, whomever of you is first. Uh, Me. Hi, everyone. How are you? Um, so I'm just going to share a screen uh, and very quickly go through slides. Everyone is moving very fast. Um, so I'm Orna Farrell from DCU Connected. So that's the part of our university that works with online students and online programs. So, you know, we're a small department. We have 1,200 students. We have a few hundred staff. And before the pandemic, uh, we've been doing this for about 30 years, originally starting with distance education and then transforming to online education as the years went by. And um, so, we, you know, we were already online. <laughs> Uh, we were probably like 90% online pre-pandemic. Um, but just while I'm talking about the pivot uh, and, and picking up on some of the other speakers' points, um, I've been working with in online education for a number of years. So during the pandemic, I was actually drafted in to share with the wider university uh, how to teach online, how to design online courses. So for a year of the pandemic, I, I was working with a kind of a ninja unit, a learning design unit that was created for the pandemic, helping uh, faculty uh, design and deliver courses online who previously would never have done this before. So I know a few people mentioned this. So I come back and now I'm head of, of, of DCU Connected by way of context. So I've, I've seen both sides. I've seen the staff view side, but also very much the student side, which we're here today to talk about. Myself and one of my colleagues, again, pre-pandemic, although it was published during the pandemic, did a very nice study into online student engagement uh, experiences about our own DCU connected learners. So that's the reference there if you'd like to have a look. We based it around Kahoo. Ella Cahoo's model for student engagement. And here are some of our key findings. Uh, and again, people have mentioned these already. So we found things that help student, students engage while learning online were community. Uh, so these could be formal communities within the course, but also informal communities, which I think Sinead is going to pick up on. Uh, time management and organizational skills are really important for, for learning online. Supportive teachers, of course multiple means of interaction. So typically online, we have um, 
you know, different ways of interacting. We typically in, in, in distance or online previously were quite reliant on discussion forums. And, and in our study, we found that this didn't suit all learners. So having different ways of interacting, for example, synchronously in Zoom or in a different asynchronous manner, maybe a chat group seemed to be more beneficial for students. And very much providing students opportunities to develop their skills, opportunities to do activities or assignments that developed self-regulation. So those are the kind of key findings. And here's a few qualitative quotes from the, from the study. But the big thing that jumped out from this study was the most significant challenge students have is what we call balance. That's because our students are adults working, minding children, lots of other competing demands on their time. So this top quote here captures that. That was the most significant challenge. If something went wrong, it, it, you know, with all the different things they were juggling, it'd have a very negative effect on, on their studies. Um, and that, this is just another one about how students learn. Um, so COVID, in a way, for our students, wasn't a huge uh, difference. Um, this is the Kahoo framework I was telling you about, a uh, very nice framework. Um, but what it did was heighten life load issues. So in Ireland, we were online for pretty much a year. This year, it's more blended, but our course is always online. But what happened was our children were home from school. Our, 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 the rest of our family were home as well. So you, you had a lot of problems with uh, people getting enough time to study. Now, that time was always a big problem, but this is heightened. Then you also have the usual stuff around broadband computer stuff. But what happened actually in Ireland during the pandemic is people had didn't have enough devices. So if the children were also studying online at home or spouses were working online, there wasn't, you know, you're looking at five laptops needed instead of one or two. Broadband problems, it's, it's, in some parts of Ireland, it's still a bit patchy. So all of those typical student engagement challenges were heightened and as I said the big things were life load and uh, also quiet space to work came up too. Um, one big problem we did have with our prob pro uh, programs they were 90% online we still had the odd face-to-face -face workshop but what we did have uh, uh, in person still was assessment we had a lot of exams in some of our modules so we had to very quickly change those in the spring of 2020 uh, to online assessments. Um, the university was quite good because this happened across the board. So they developed some principles. They developed a kind of a quality assurance method so that the, the alternative assessments were reviewed by external examiners, internal examiners. So it actually worked quite well. It was a huge amount of work in a very short amount of time, though. Our, we, what we decided to do was to try and take quite um, an open approach so we replaced a lot of our exams with essentially take home exams that students could use books. We'd give them anywhere between two days to five days to complete. Um, and we did this because, A, they're more accessible and flexible because, they're you know, you don't need a lot of bandwidth to download an assignment brief, work away on it. Uh, flexible because we're conscious of the life load issues that our students always have and which are heightened. Uh, and also the fact that they were asynchronous, you know, so that people could work on them when they had time at their own pace. So that's kind of where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to hand over to my esteemed colleague, Sinead, who's going to talk about, about it from a student point of view. So over to you, Sinead. Lovely. I'll just share my screen. Just bear with me one second. That's fine, Sinead. I can see it. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, so um, I am Sinead and I've been in the Humanities Psychology major programme in DC Connected for the last three years. Um, so, of course, that means that I had a small bit of the pre-pandemic time and um, the, the entirety of the pandemic. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the experiences of us and the benefits and challenges and some of the outcomes from that. So um, some of the benefits, first of all. So um, at the beginning of the 2020 academic year, all the in-person classes in Ireland moved online. So in my own home, um, I was starting my second year in DCU Connected. And my daughter 
was actually beginning her first year in what should have been an in-person course. So in her course, all the students and lecturers were trying to adapt to new technologies while also trying to meet the usual schedule of timetabled lectures. However, for us in online education, we were in an environment that was already tailored specifically to allow flexibility for students. So we were able to go to um, our tutorials at the times we needed to, or if we couldn't attend, we could go to recordings and it was so much more flexible. We had a lot of support um, and a lot more understanding because everyone already knew how to work this. There was no kind of trying to understand how things worked um, or trying to kind of get to grips with technology and get to grips with live and recording of lectures and then uploading it. Um, but of course, as well as benefits, there were some challenges. And as Orna mentioned as well, um, trying to balance life with everyone then suddenly being at home, people were trying to balance having their children at home, working from home and also trying to study, which became quite overwhelming. Because for a lot of students, they were previously kind of allocating study time. Usually, you know, maybe when their children were at school or when they come home from work or in the evenings and suddenly everything changed. Um, but what was lovely was in tutorials, our tutors were making this huge effort to talk to us about um, what was going on in their lives. There was actually one particular tutorial when a tutor was one of two tutors was a little bit late. And they came in and they said, I'm sorry, guys, I'm a little bit late uh, because I was homeschooling my child. And I just wanted to make sure, you know, I had that done. And I'm really, really sorry. I'm usually so organized. But it started this really lovely, supportive, inclusive conversation about homeschooling and about balancing life, um, which everyone in the class took part in and the shooters as well. And it really helped people see that we weren't on our own. We could reach out to people and the program team and the tutors were all there to support us, which made a huge difference for people that we knew we had um, so much support and them there if we needed it. A lot of people then struggled to meet deadlines. And as Orna mentioned, um, deadlines were kind of extended. And if we needed help, again, we knew that it was OK to say, I need help. I'm struggling because we knew everyone else was struggling, too. It wasn't a situation where we kind of had to keep going. We were allowed to say, I need help. Please can can you help me? And one of the big things, and again, Orna, Orna previously mentioned this, um, the feeling of being isolated among distance education students was quite increased during the pandemic. So uh, the students themselves created social groups and um, drop-in chats online where we could kind of support each other. And that led to the creation of a society this year, which is still going. And we're very, very proud of that. Um, so from there, there was this year when DCU itself has returned to mainly on campus, there seems to be much greater need. Uh, much, sorry, let me start that sentence again. There seems to be a much greater awareness of the needs of online students. And um, there's a lot more services available now. So previously, things that were only available to in-campus students have now been made into a hybrid model. Um, which means that online students are better able to access everything. And of course, then everything is more of a, a well-rounded experience for everyone. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you well very done, much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much, Jenny. <laughs> uh, I, I feel really uh, successful uh, um, in such a short time, uh, less than one hour, to be able to hear, to, to have your contributions, to have your different uh, presentations uh, from different people and panelists uh, sharing with us the challenges the lessons learned, the solutions, the, uh, the, the ideas. Uh, and uh, now I would like uh, to invite uh, all speakers um, to, to be visible on the screen, if, if that is technically possible. I think, yes, uh, I still see, Sinead, your um, desktop uh, shared. So uh, just for the final Around, and I am aware that we have only five minutes, but I would like uh, uh, to invite uh, people. Shinit, could you please uh, exit um, uh, sharing your screen? Yeah, technically. 
Okay, thank you very much. I would like to invite now each of you to give one word, uh, one key word that uh, you would choose as the best definition in one word that we should take with us to the future. I heard a lot of nice keywords in your contributions. I don't want to repeat them now, but uh, to let you rethink, choose one and uh, pronounce it. Uh, but also uh, the attendants, uh, those who were following your presentations, you might also use the chat area to post your keywords. So the best keyword, the best recommendation that is in your heart and that you would Mm, keep it as a lesson from the pandemic, but that you would like to recommend to take it to the future of education with you. What that word would be? Anyone who would like to start? Yes, Sorna. Empathy. Empathy. Thank you. We have empathy with us. Sinead? Mm -hmm. Maybe two words, okay. direct, direct communication, like I don't mean um, it should be personal, but like we are now speaking because I think that people are going away from that and that's a problem. Thank you very much, Sandra. Direct communication. Colleagues, partnership I see in the chat. Lina, Oshra, Busala, Damari. From my side, lessons learned. Lessons learned. Thank you. Busala? From me, I would say engagement because it's important as it's also my research area. Yeah, I think it's important in online learning. Thank you. We have time management in the chat. Thanks, Estella. Okay, Tamari. Lena, Sinead? Maybe the partnerships, so the student faculty partnerships. It's one of the most important things. Thank you very much, Tamari. Community from Giedre in the chat. Thank you. Cooperation from Daiva. Maybe inclusion as well. Inclusion. Thank you, Sinead. Uh, we still miss, I think, Lena. I don't know if she's with us. Yes, I see Lina is with us. <laughs> Maybe I am can. in and out. I'm in and out. So, <laughs> so for me, probably it will be more stability, the best word. But, um, well, I probably will repeat myself. Cooperation and collaboration. Thank you, Lina. Cooperation and collaboration, stability. And we have sustainability from Raya. Uh, from me, uh, I connected. Thank you, Christina. Maybe other, uh, anybody else. For me, the word that I heard in the majority of your contribution would also be balance. Balance among, among many things, we need to find our balance uh, through the storm. Uh, understanding, as in for tutors, as well as it's new to them. Uh, so, understanding teachers uh, and tutors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all of you. As the final word, I would like just uh, to announce to you that um, this session is uh, coming to an end. Thank you very much to all the speakers and all attendants of the sessions, uh, student voices are very important and I'm very happy when the academy, when the departments have collected the, and, and can share them with us. Thank you all uh, very, very much. So please follow the uh, events of European Open Distance and Learning Week online. We have events on Friday, we have events on Monday, Tuesday, uh, and even Wednesday, finalizing with a report card on the crisis and the legacy, uh, sorry, the, the legacy of the great onlining of higher education. So stay connected. Thanks a lot for your attention, for attendance and for participation. Stay well. Bye-bye to everyone. Bye-bye.